This is the Dalles Mountain Ranch Trail, and the balsam root flowers are just, this is, this is gorgeous. It's very, <laughs> this is a great location. I'm going to shoot this for sunset tonight, and I came out early to scout, to find a composition, get set, know where I'm going to be, know where I'm going to, uh, how long it takes to hike from the car, so and find out exactly where the sun's going to set, and let me show you. So this old car is just rusted away and half buried, but look at the balsam root. And if the balsam root flowers weren't enough, the lupin is just sprinkled in and the purple that goes along with it is just going to set this rusty old car, I think is going to make a perfect backdrop for sunset. Now. I was hoping for some clouds, and there's clouds moving in later, supposed to tonight. But right now there is absolutely nothing, but I don't think it's gonna kill it, make or break the photograph. I think either way I could come away with something really, really nice because it's primary colors. We've got you know just a yellow and a purple and a blue and a green and this rusty old car. And as the sun starts to set, and as it, I'm gonna get a sun star hopefully, get the, even into the blue hour, and I think it'll work no matter what. Obviously, it would be amazing to have a, just a gorgeous, you know, blazing red sunset. But that's probably asking for a bit too much, at least this time. But I'm going to hang out, uh, set up, get a few shots just to test some things, make sure I've got exactly what I want, and then just wait for sunset. Okay, so I'm back at the car and it's sunset and I've got to hurry. Good thing I've already got my composition set. I want to get these some photographs of these flowers while they're still backlit. That's not going to last very long. As a matter of fact, it's starting to go away even as I'm talking. So um, glad I got here early. So it allows me to not waste a lot of time. All right. And I'm obviously going to have to bracket my shots. That car is being backlit very much. Uh, and the sky is totally blown out. Even when I'm underexposing, the sky is blown because it's getting ready to go. So I need to get some shots here. So I'm going to have to take and up my shutter, my ISO. Sorry, I'm going to have to increase my ISO to keep my shutter speed high enough so that my, sh my shutter speeds are quick because there's a little bit of a breeze blowing and I don't want these flowers to get out to be blurry. So in order to make that happen, I'm gonna, like I say, I bump my ISO to 400, F16, because I need as much depth of field as I can possibly get, uh, but I don't want to go um, all the way to F22 because it's, uh, I'm gonna have to wait for another, uh, to a little bit of a lull here. Come on. 
Ah, uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. I didn't wasn't. Oh, but it's going to be really, really pretty though. And then checking your focus is like super important. I've got to take and make sure that I'm, I'm focus stacking because you can see how close all of these are, uh, you know, to my lens. And in order for that to work, I've got to just be so, so right on the money. Um, so I'm just double checking my edge patrol, making sure like any of these little bitty things that I might can just easily remove these dead sticks is just not in my frame. Um, and again, I'm waiting for the wind to die down just a little bit, then take my shots. So hopefully you'll be, you're able to see the, uh, the composition on the back of the camera. Like I say, I'm over, I've, I've overexposed it a lot just so you can actually um, see the composition. But the flowers are very, very close. I'm at 16 millimeters or very close to it. Actually, I'm probably at 18. That's 16. So I'm at 18, which is fine because I just wanted a little bit in from that. I'm going to wait a little bit for the blue hour. Everything stopped being backlit. And now I am, it's still kind of glowing though, because the sun's just kicking in the background. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm just going to wait for that sun to go down a little bit more. I'm not going to move my camera at all. Again, because I want to be able to pick and choose frames that obviously are, are going to be better than others, according to the movement of the flowers, because there is just a gentle breeze. And even though my, I've got a pretty quick shutter speed, I don't think that it's uh, it's going to be fast enough, especially when I'm trying to pull out shadows and stuff in that old car. While I'm waiting for the sun to really actually set and the sky to get a little darker, some of you guys might be wondering, well, how do I know where to set up? How do I find a composition? Well, you start by like examining the the area and having an idea of you know, what your subject, again, foreground, subject, and background is, is kind of like the, the what you're always trying to satisfy in the equation of composition. So if you look at this, there is just a lot of dead space between these flowers and the car. It's a lot. Even, you know, it's a good, you know, eight, nine feet. I don't want that in my composition because it's not very interesting. What's interesting is that car and then all of those, those flowers, you know, up on the hill above it. And then what would be absolutely perfect would be this incredible sunset with clouds. But uh, uh, we're just going to just ignore that part for right now. But um, so I wouldn't, picking a lens, I knew that I, I wouldn't want something that would be telephoto because there's a lot to capture here, right? I mean, there's the car, there's the sky, there's all those flowers. There's that fence row up there that's really, really cool. I don't know if you can see it at the very, very top of the frame up here, um, but uh, it's a fence row, fence post, and those are kind of cool as well. So I wanted to fill the foreground, and basically the real subject is gonna be the flowers. And so you get really, really close, like really close, and unfortunately even the, my, my video camera here is just not going to be wide enough to get what I want. It's kind of getting close. You can kind of get the idea. Um, so the lower you get, you eliminate that middle ground, which is not very attractive at all. And you make those flowers like larger than life. They really start to fill the frame. And by eliminating all of this nothingness, this big swath of nothingness out here, it makes for a better, better composition. It's sunset official, and the wind is starting to pick up. It's not going to get a lot better. The darker it gets, the higher I'm going to have to pump my ISO, and it's the only thing. good thing is I'm not going to have to bracket as much. That's the only saving grace with that is that it'll, 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 the dynamic range as the sun goes down is going to get less, and now that it's set, that dynamic range is gonna get a little less, less, less. So that'll help me out a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a couple more shots and then hopefully out of all of that, I'll have something I can come away with that'll work really nicely. This first photo shows the sun setting. And so I get a nice starburst effect. 
as I caught the sun just as it was setting behind the hill. It's my least favorite of the shots that I'm about to show you simply because the sky was just so bright and bland with, you know, shooting directly into the sun. So while I like the sunburst, I don't like the sky at all. This second shot is after the sun had set. So the sky is a much prettier color. There's some oranges and yellows and some starting to get some nice blue tones in the sky, making it a much better photograph overall. So just waiting on the light, having the time and patience to wait until after the sun had set a while made for a much better photograph. But I decided to also throw in a sky replacement. So this last photograph is my favorite and this is what I was hoping for and what I was envisioning in my head. So this is what I created. I'd love to hear your comments below. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.